Welcome to FantasticBirds.us. This training video is entitled The Magnification Game. This is a very strange name. What I'm trying to do is explain the terms used for magnification associated with spotting scopes and binoculars, and I wanted to relate that to SLR cameras and then point-and-shoot cameras because 6x, 8x, 10x does not mean the same thing across the board. Now, most birders are familiar with binoculars and spotting scopes. Common binocular magnifications are 6x, 8x, 10x. Yes, there are other sizes, other powers of magnification, but those are the standard ones. Spotting scopes tend to go 20x, 40x, 60x. Sometimes you have a zoom range within a spotting scope. The X value in birding is clearly understood. 6X means six times more powerful than the human eye. 8X, eight times more powerful. 20X in a spotting scope, 20 times more powerful than the human eye. That's easy to understand because we all have some reference as to what we can see with our eyes. Now SLR cameras were based on the human eye if you were using 35 millimeter film. If your point of reference was 35 millimeter film and you had a 50 millimeter lens, that was 1x. 100 millimeter lenses gave you 2x. 200 millimeters, 4x. 400 millimeters, 8x. You get the idea. For every 50 millimeters you added to a lens with the reference sensor being 35 millimeters, you gained effectively one additional X of power. But what happens in a digital world? Well, full frame sensors are based on 35 millimeter film size. There were a lot of purists that got used to shooting 35 millimeter film and they wanted cameras that could do exactly the same thing. So that's what a full frame camera is. You're going to find SLR cameras that say they have a crop factor. It just means the sensor is smaller than 35 millimeter film. Is that a problem? Not at all. It really doesn't matter, especially with bird photography. But depending on how much smaller that sensor is, your camera might be said to have a 1.4x magnification factor or a 1.6x magnification factor. So if you're shooting a 300 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor that is 6x as compared to the human eye. If you have that 300 millimeter lens and you have a 1.4 crop sensor, you'll have somebody out there telling you they have a 420 millimeter equivalent. Well, it's true. I can actually argue that both sides. I think it's actually kind of a silly argument to have because I've shot full frame, I've shot crop sensors. They're both lovely. The truth of the matter is I still wind up cropping my photographs dramatically, no matter what sensor I have in the camera. They might have a 1.4 extender on that and they'll, they'll, they'll happily tell you, well, this is 300 millimeters and this 1.4 will give me this and then the 1.4 crop sensor makes it this. Are they correct? Yes. Does it really matter? Not if you're shooting birds, because birds for the most part are tiny, they won't let you get close to them, and you're not going to fill the frame most of the time with the bird anyway, so you're going to wind up cropping. The only thing a crop sensor does is there were pixels never recorded in the first place, so you technically have less to crop. Does it really matter at the end of the day? Probably not. Full frame sensors are a little bit nicer if you're trying to photograph very fast birds because sometimes it's hard to pan as quickly as they're flying, especially when you get to the closest point of approach. You might have an extra couple pixels on the end to actually capture the bird without clipping it off. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Now, I just told you that binoculars and spotting scopes were based on the human eye. And I told you that SLR cameras were based on the human eye. Guess what's not based on the human eye? Point and shoots. You're going to have a 20x spotting scope, hypothetically, and you know the power of magnification you get out of that. And you're going to see a little point and shoot that says, wow, this gives me 80x. This must be a really good camera. 
They're not measuring the same thing, and I think honestly, to a certain degree, it's a con job. Is the number they're giving you real technically, but is not referenced against the magnification associated with the human eye. When you're dealing with point and shoot cameras, the thing you need to watch for is the word equivalent. It will say, oh, I've got a 28 to 280 millimeter equivalent. They put really tiny sensors in the point and shoot. That's not really a problem. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But they'll take the 280 millimeter full zoom divided by the lowest point of zoom. In this case, I made up 28 millimeters and they'll come up with 10 X of magnification. So if you're thinking you're going to get the same magnification out of your 10 X binoculars, it's not even going to be close. Hopefully by now, you know, 280 millimeters is close to six X. There's another problem with these equivalents. They will often combine the optical range with the digital zoom. Digital zoom and optical zoom are not the same thing. Optical zoom is how much the lens gives you. Then the camera, which basically is a computer chip, can crop portions of that photograph and blow it up so that you feel like you had all this extra zoom. Is it real zoom? Well, again, you could make an argument probably either way and have some validity there. It just depends on how you want to reference terms. But you might have an 80x point and shoot, which has perhaps 20 or 30x of optical zoom, and the remaining factor is the digital zoom, how much the camera can crop for you. Again, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter, but I've seen a lot of birders who think that the magnification on this point and shoot is the same magnification they're getting out of their bins or their SLR cameras, and it's not. There's nothing wrong with point and shoot cameras. They're a little harder to use for bird photography. Generally, the more zoom you get out of any optic, the less sharp it is at any point, especially when you start pushing it to the far ranges but it really doesn't matter. The point here is I wanted you to understand where binoculars were basing their measurement, how cameras evolved to base their measurement off the human eye, and then to understand that the number associated with point and shoots has no correlation whatsoever. That concludes this training video. Thank you for taking the time to view this content.